Yeah, feel free to add yourself um, in the attendees for May 13th. I don't see Steve quite yet. Um, and he's got an artifacts topic. Hey, folks. Hey, welcome. Sorry, I was running a little late. Um, I see there's some Alexa topics, but given what time I know it is in Australia, I assume we could discuss it, but I have a hard time believing he'd be here. Did he add those? Yeah, I'd, I'd be surprised too. Yeah, yeah, this was, I only had the one issue as of yesterday. Yeah. Did, is Matt Farina here? There's a lot of people here. He is not. I talked to him earlier today and he said he's taking the day off. So in the spirit of taking a day off, I'm going to let him be. Okay. This was his issue. What's the move next week? Done. Is Alexa here? No, I was just mentioning I would be surprised um, given the hour it is in Australia. Oh, uh, yeah. I'm wondering if we can move that discussion to a different time because I know Fu Wei wanted to attend as well, and it's, per, I mean, he's in a similar time, time constraint. If Josh gets here, I know he's a good second for Matt um, because apparently Matt was asking those questions because Josh had asked them, which ironically then basically came back to Josh. <laughs> yes. Um, yeah, so I did ask, I basically brought up in the Helm call last week, um, I had been getting questions uh, about basically all the Helm OCI support is behind an experimental flag. So people are kind of like, and, or like antsy to have that not experimental. And so I just brought up the question why, and, or basically when's the right time to lift that and uh, Matt Farina was the one who had like the biggest opinion on it and then went to document it in those um, tickets. And I sort of agree, but at the same time, um, I think Jimmy said something last week that was great. That was like, you know, it doesn't change the fact that we're all using registries, even though distribution spec isn't 1.0. So um, I'm wondering if we can just as far as artifacts go, just put a mini paragraph in distribution spec before it hits 1.0 that just says, you know, this is a general purpose API that can work for anything. Um, however, if you are looking for uh, best practices, come see this repo and that would point to artifacts. I, I kind of got caught in it on both sides, honestly. At one point, I was like, look, this only affects a certain number of people. I'm looking to see if Chris is here, because Chris and I were on a Slack conversation with Matt on this. And it was, you know, at one point, I was like, look, there's only affects a couple of people. There's like only, you know, it's several teams that are going to create artifacts. Eventually, there'll be lots more. Well, then by then, we'll have more clarity. Um, if the members of this TOB and the uh, maintainers and blah, blah, blah are all telling you like it's good, but what really is the, the blocker that you need? Because this is a, a circle. Customers, registries like the ones we run here are obviously probably more likely to open, but there's other ones. They're only going to open it when there's enough artifacts to want to do it. They're only going to be enough artifacts to do it if we can get them to take things out of um, experimental. There's an interesting bug with Terraform that Terraform can't actually deploy Helm charts because this thing's under experimental and they're not willing to do the work also. So we want to break the loop. What's really blocking you? Doesn't seem like anything's blocking you. At the same token, there is some credibility to like, it's really a handshake promise. There's no handshakes these days. They're just virtual promises um, that we're not going to change anything. Uh, even in conversations amongst Derek and in the, on these various calls, I can see we're out of sync on a couple of things only because things have changed over time. Um, as we've learned, the IANA process helped clarify some things and others. So if we don't have clarity amongst ourselves, it is kind of hard for somebody externally to commit code, 
that has a large pro uh, public promise to a large community that we, the standard process is something is versioned and you don't make breaking changes within a version is the implied promise. So I'm kind of of the opinion, is there a downside to saying that is a spec, there is a version. It's, you know, it's dependent on these other versions, but there is a version to it. And by having a version, it says, okay, the media type format that we've identified that gets registered with Diana, if you want to guarantee your ownership of it, but the format of it isn't going to change. Um, and all the other attributes that we've talked about in that artifact spec are, are, are fixed. Is that the only thing though, is, is the, the format for media types? Because uh, yeah. I'm, I mean, the ones that, the artifact creators, like, I guess from my perspective, it's, it's a set of guidelines and we, we give suggestions for how these things should be laid out. But if it changes, it doesn't break anybody. Like if we change the guidelines, it doesn't mean that everything that was done before it is now incompatible. That's why I, I just don't quite understand what the, what the compatibility issues are. Um, and, and I'm not saying that versioning is bad. Uh, my, my perspective was more about like, like what does a 1.0 mean? Like some things like guidelines are better just seen as kind of snapshots at, at specific dates. Like this is what the guidelines were for, you know, this period of time. And then they changed on this at this time. Um, not necessarily like this is 1.0, this is 1.1. Oh, we changed the format. Now it's 2.0. Like, I, I guess I just have a hard time wrapping my, my head around it. No, it's fair. There, there's a couple of things in here that are subtle. The bigger ones that will be more impactful are not yet in. Um, but let's talk about what's in right now. It, it, you're right. It is the media types. It's the format of application slash, or it's actually referencing the IANA um, definitions. Then there is whether you use a config or not. There is some stuff in there that actually has evolved with some clarity that wasn't there before. You actually can push an empty config and that's perfectly valid. We just need a unique media type on that config because that's how the equivalent of the file extension. There is some stuff in there around, hey, here's the guidance and it is guidance on how you split layer types. We also put some stuff in there that was the feedback again from this group on the extension of the layer type and so forth. The piece that's not in there yet and why I wouldn't really declare this a released 1.0 is the well-known stuff, although it won't be the quote exact clearinghouse, it won't be an official authority by us accepting a PR into the artifact spec for the helm definition, that doesn't declare uniqueness. What we've now deferred that to IANA. But when somebody does want to tell other registries, hey, here's what my logo looks like. Here's the localized text strings. Here's what else is in there? Uh, what tools are associated with it? There was a whole bunch of things in that JSON file um, that is the next PR that I, I'll make. Um, I purposely wanted to keep those separate because there was too much intermixed, but that stuff will actually have specific schemas, specific details to it. And we could say maybe that's when we'll do a 1.0 and I was, that's why I deferred in the PR. If you remember, I changed it from spec to artifacts authors. Yeah, whatever. but like going back to what Derek said, what does it actually mean to be 1.0? Does this need versioning at all? Um, it will when you get those schemas. Those schemas will have schemas that are unique to what it takes to publish one. Okay, so those schemas are going to be more than just like an image, like assets. Exactly. Right? They'll, it, okay. It'll be like JSON. There's lots of different JSON formats that aren't manifest formats. Uh, I did at one point called it a, a publisher's manifest and that definitely confused people. Um, so why we, uh, Mike and I had a long conversation about that. I didn't realize the, the history of it. So I renamed it. In fact, I wound up just pulling it out because that'll be another PR that'll be specifically for publishing well-known artifacts. Um, so it, I think it, it'll be much more clear later when there, when it needs to be version, because I, I'm sure that those schemas will evolve. I'm sure we'll learn something and we'll need want to change them. It's not as clear now. And until Matt's making an issue of this, I'm not trying to say Matt personally, but it's, you know, until one of our partners that's trying to use this is trying to say, Hey, how do I have some stability around this? I was trying to defer it. Well, I guess, I guess I just want like a clear picture of like, cause when, when I hear stability, I hear somebody's implementing a flow of something. 
<laughs> and they're worried about that flow changing. Except to be honest, like I don't understand what this flow is. That's why I was trying to understand like, okay, he's talking about stability, which means he has something very specific in his mind. And I don't have any idea. It, it wasn't clear to me exactly what that's referring to. Like, yes, if you have an API, you have specific media types or schemas, then stability is important if you start writing code against that. But mm -hmm. none of that stuff exists. So I, I, just conf I was just confused I by that, I guess. If I can summarize his thoughts, I, I think it's, uh, I don't want to speak for him, but I think it's mostly like small things like if we decide that the media type config media type is not the place that that's going to happen, that you're going to key off of different artifacts. Mm. Uh, if we've published things with Helm today, next month, are we going to be able to download them? And, um, you know, distribution going 1.0, I think is a separate concern, but it's more about are things going to change. Uh, Think about how long we debated is the config object the right thing to actually say this what uniquely defines an artifact that yes we finally narrowed it we published it it is but right now it's a guidance if we decide next week that we're gonna use some annotation or use something completely else um, that kind of leaves them in a tough spot because they have a released product helm that has an implementation that is stuck on a certain way well, it's almost like kind of to turn the thing back at Matt. Well, Helm has had this feature flag and the support for the longest of anything, basically. Um, maybe excluding like some of the CNAB stuff, but they should be the ones with the most feedback for us saying if it's working for them or not, right? So it's it's kind of like a bi uh, bi-directional conversation if we want to try to make some more guarantees, we're gonna need some feedback from, from the Helm community determining whether that actually There's, solved. there's another side to that though, to registries not accepting Helm charts. So like people cannot really use it right now um, unless they're on ACR or I guess today Harbor put out Helm support, but like it, it's, I don't know. People are really excited about it and I, it's people really want it. And I think most people don't care with what part of the JSON it's on and that type of thing. It's, uh, I, mean, I, I think it is just, if Helm just does it, it will break through because now it's right. elevated, it yeah. works and it'll drive its own demand. So I, I feel like, I, I, I agree with most of the folks here and like the current state of where things are I really don't see what the blocker is. And I put that into that a couple of times. That said, I think it will become more clear that we, I think we will wind up arguing that we do want a version on it. And if, if it's, we're blocking this circle, do we deal with it now and don't get into this argument anymore? Cause we're we'll more than likely eventually do it anyway. Or do we just say, you know, I mean, cause at the end of the day, it's Josh that's doing all the <laughs> development work in Helm that for this feature. So, I think we're really trying to help him get this work in is the way I'm interpreting. I wasn't even on the call. I'm just getting like these Slack conversations. No, it, it's, it's not so much that. And, and other, the community is actually coming in and doing OCI stuff now, but like the, it, it's, can people, when you download Helm, do this out of the box? And today the answer is no, because it's hidden and, um, I don't know. There, there's there's a few other things like related to the Helm UX that I think make it experimental. Um, but I don't know. It's tricky. I, I think I think the answer to this is we're close to distribution 1.0. Um, if we can just put a little language in there that I don't know that like kind of signs off on the way Helm is doing it. Uh, I don't know. It's there's not really a. Yeah, I, I think Matt's looking for just direction from us, and he wants a concrete guarantee from us. Which, in the strictest sense, 
distribution spec isn't even 1.0 yet, right? So we have some subtle changes that are going to be made to the spec still. So that was just kind of my counterpoint in that thread. But that's not to say that most of the registries out here today aren't paying their marketing team to go out and say they support OCI, even though there's no like finished specification for them to be compliant with, and most of them don't pass the compliance suite. So things work today, even though not everyone is implementing the specifications to the strictest sense. So to that degree, you could absolutely implement this stuff and start using it and depending on it because people already are. I mean, I think if, as long as Helm charts, like Helm charts and Singular, Helm chart is certainly a much broader surface area of people that are using it than, than Singular. I mean, like there's a really deep community, but it's not as broad. Um, and I'm not sure where OPA and some of the other ones are yet. And we certainly have CNAP just waiting for us to do the next round. But like, if we just got Helm unblocked and unblocked might just be like, Josh, Matt, what else do you need? Like, can we just get this done? Then the, I think customers aren't going to come to AWS, Azure, and others saying, hey, are you OCI compliant? They're going to like, hey, do you support Helm charts? And that's what they care about. So we have the predominant number of people that are on this call or we're in, we talk to on a regular basis. We've got the hard parts in place. Um, I know, you know, every pretty much everybody here is either on the cusp of getting the pieces done to get this working for them as well. I guess I'm kind of putting back to you, Josh, like I, to some extent, I, uh, you as the representative, um, I, I support what he's asking for. I don't see it as a blocker. What I would like is um, kind of more specifics in terms of, so I don't, I still don't have a good understanding of where some of the failures are on different registries. Is it, using kind of not sticking to the manifest types? Is it different registries are rejecting these different manifest types? Oh, why um, home doesn't work, you're saying? Or artifacts yes. work? Yeah, I want to know like, like yeah, I don't, yeah. I mean, I, I've been no, saying this for a while that there's nothing wrong, there's nothing wrong in the spec, but I know that registries are, can be very firm about the actual content that shows up in the manifest and those media types. Um, so yeah, that, that's, that's kind of what I want to understand from their perspective, what is the limiting factor? What, what, is it, what will it take for a registry in very specific terms, not just saying registry supports no, no, home or doesn't support home, but like when a manifest gets pushed up that has this type, they're getting rejected. Correct. So that we know exactly where to put the language in the spec. Uh, because, yeah, I mean, I think we could have some general statement talking about it, but I, I think it'd be good to put it very specifically in like the manifest endpoint spec for, or endpoint. Uh, yeah, so and the, this is one of the first is actually in there actually already. Made, right? um, the, the, re the distribution spec specific says you must support this, but it, it's open for others. What happened was all the registries had limited, limit, uh, filtering on what manifest types they supported. In fact, we were even we were confused whether what we had an ACR for a while, um, and we wound up just opening it up. Joey wanted to keep it closed. We had this debate back and forth. Um, so now I think we've got a good answer. So it, you're right to be this to be compliant with the spec. You actually, and what we is the spec says you must support this. You don't have to support others. And we're going to say the same thing in artifacts because there's two other main documents I'm going to publish. There's one that says here's how to publish a well-known artifact type. Uh, because those are the breadth of people that want to create these. There's another document that will be for the people that are on this call and a couple others that are on different time zones that says, as registry operators, here's the things that you would you would want to have to do, you would do to enable it. But we're also going to say that customers and registries may limit, like I as a customer, I'm Contoso, I don't want anything but this particular set of media types in this repo. That's this other repo. And that'll be a perfectly valid thing so, but it'll be driven by the dev team says, I'm trying to push these things to a registry. Why isn't that open? Oh, let me go flip that and open it. Or that registry doesn't support it. Hey, I'll open a ticket on Quay. I'll pick on Jimmy Pure for a second. And they'll, you know, add that up. So the, the pieces are just not, there's no motivation yet to be completely compliant with the spec because there's not enough artifacts that are complete to support this. If we can get a artifacts test 
in the conformance test, also by our Josh Deliski uh, 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 Helm repo developer too, uh, then I think the pieces will be in place and the people just go, oh yeah, that's all I need to do, done. I think the, the tricky thing too is that exact behavior on how you handle a, like a media type that you don't understand was actually a change that had to be made on the image specification and not in the distribution spec. Um, because that actually surprised me when I opened that pull request um, that we actually oh, had this to- stuff is split between the two, you're right. Yeah, and so that's probably what is causing a lot of confusion is because this is now more important than it has been in the past and hopefully this is a thing we can address um, when we're kind of reorganizing the spec, the distribution spec, because this is actually important now and we need to clarify this behavior. Um, yeah, the fact that it's all in desperate places is kind of strange. That's the yeah. refactoring that Mike had opened up the issue on refactoring where the schemas are referenced versus basically we've got distribution, we've got image spec, and we have these two manifest schemas that happen to be living in the image spec. Yeah, I don't think us continuously screaming the image, images, it can be anything, it can be anything, it can be anything is enough because I feel like we're, that approach isn't scaling. We tell one person at a time right. and then some, like the next day somebody new comes up and says, oh shoot, I see the spec is only for images. So um, clarifying that, but actually this goes back to what you were saying about adding schemas to artifact spec. To me, it almost doesn't make sense to do that unless we're going to try to fork off the index in manifest spec Sorry. from image spec into artifact spec. And I know so we when talked I say about this schemas, a while ago. When I say schemas, I want to be really careful because this is the problem I got myself into last time. There is a way for, if I am the marky mark thing that uh, that Derek, uh, Josh did a while ago, and I want to have a special artifact on that. I have a special logo associated with it. Here's my localized strings. There is a JSON document that has a schema that has nothing to do with a manifest. It looks nothing like a manifest. It looks like a JSON file format. That's the thing that would be defined in this. It doesn't get uh, pushed to a registry. It, it, we'll figure out how it is. It's basically just here's a way to define a set of things in code so that we can automate these. I was not trying to find yet another manifest index kind of schema that would represent Well, I'm anything. saying maybe, maybe that's not such a bad idea or for it to, to go that way. Mm. Uh, what I'm saying is if, if artifacts were to be a spec, then the first thing we should do is split out the manifest and index spec into it and then have the image spec just be the image artifact, which defines the image config as well as how to create an image artifact. And the light on the other one, like let's take it to the, let's really refactor it and get it cleaned up. I mean, yeah, it's, it's a bigger change, but if that's the direction we have to go in, we could go in that direction. We don't, we don't have to do it overnight, but. Uh, I was going to say that the fact that uh, we have... Uh, it's hard to hear you, Alexa. Can you, can you get your mic closer? Can, good morning, by the way. Good morning. Yeah. Is, Is that, that the same shirt from yesterday? Did you like wake up in the middle of your night to get on our call? Uh, no, I mean, it's it's seven in the morning. It's not that bad, but um, oh, okay. yeah, the, the, the meeting link is actually wrong. It says it's 9 a.m., which is something I discovered about five minutes ago. It was actually incorrect. Anyway, um, yeah, sorry. Uh, what I was going to say is that uh, the... The the split between image spec, distribution spec, and and artifacts is a is a series of historical um, accidents slash you know weirdnesses slash politics and all the rest of it. Um, so I would say that us trying to um, remerge some of those things is entirely natural and honestly is where we should have is how it should have been from the beginning. Um, whether that remerging is either literally taking two projects together and smushing them together and, and merging them. Or it means um, taking things that should be in a different project and moving them. So for instance, when it comes to manifest, um, I can definitely, there is some slight complications about, you know, uh, 
how you would implement an image spec tool if there is no manifest in the image spec. But on the other hand, I mean, manifest is something which um, makes more sense in some senses to be in distribution spec, for instance. I mean, this is a discussion that would have to be taken with like, you know, everyone sitting down and shouting at each other. But um, I, I think that I think that trying to undo some of these historical weirdnesses is definitely a good idea. Um, and it, you know, I completely agree that it, it is confusing to a lot of people. Um, especially when you say like, oh, image spec was released and then people are like, oh, how, so how do I download it? It's like, well, we don't have a distribution spec yet. And then a distribution spec and it's like, well, how do you use it? Well, you know, this is the artifacts thing and it's, um, re-merging these things would be a good idea because it is confusing. Um, I feel like we've been going in circles for two years or something. Um, but uh, maybe yeah, like, I, I think I have more information. I, I can talk to, there's a, the Helm calls tomorrow. I can, I can try to get like what Derek's asking. Um, you know, what are the concrete things that they need from OCI? Try to go from there. Um, but it's already at 430. So I don't know if we want to move on to Alexa's stuff. So what do we, what, let's, let's do some action. So I think it was a good conversation. You'll take it up with the Helm folks to see how they can get unblocked in the short term. We should queue up uh, a conversation. It's obviously not going to be at KubeCon and in, in the same place, having fun drinking. Um, we'll be at home drinking. Uh, let's queue up another call about how we want to refactor it. We'll figure out how to get Alexa Mimosa first so we can get up early in the morning and we'll shift times. That sound like the right. We've been to to Josh's point. We have been talking about this for two years since we've been talking about this. It's been great. It's been this good evolution. Evolutions have weird things that grow out of them. Um, it's been a really good place. I mean, we got Brian here from GitHub. Is you know they they've got some stuff going on there too. That'll be nice to to leverage all this stuff as well. Um, but there is a lack of clarity in, that we. I, I think the way Derek said it made a lot of sense. We spend more time trying to explain to people. Uh, how you tie these three things together, then would be maybe just to clean up a couple of things that uh, I think Josh had a PR where we we're using the word artifact instead of image in the distribution spec and some of that might help. And if we're good, then we'll cue that up and hand off to Alexa. I guess Alexa, it's up to you. Sure, yeah. Um, so I have two topics. Uh, I'm gonna do them in reverse order so that, because one is very, very minor, I just wanna make sure that it's mentioned, um, is that, uh, so there is a Run C issue, which um, is something that we're dealing with within Run C. I just thought it'd be useful for everyone to know this. Um, it turns out that OCI projects have actually been misusing semantic versioning. Um, when it comes to release candidates. Uh, so, the, and this is like such a minor thing, but it's something that we happen to hit because we've been doing release candidates for four years. Um, so the, basically the issue is, is that um, when you write release candidates, super, super minor thing is that uh, the way that they would be written with like the four semantic versioning is like 1.0-RC3. Um, it turns out that this actually, that this RC3 string is actually uh, compared lexicographically, even though it has a number in it. Um, the way you would actually want to write it is RC.3 or RC.4, which is actually what triggers uh, Semver to, 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 um, to treat the dot three as a numeric, which means that for instance, RC10, which of, dot, of run C, which was released some time ago in January, I think, um, is actually treated to be uh, a release before RC2, and that has triggered some issues with people who use Go modules. So that's like super quick, something that people should be aware of. Uh, other people working on other projects, it's um, it's something which I definitely laughed a little bit about and then cried about the second I found out about it. Um, and yeah, we have we're now trying to figure out a way to work around this because yeah, anyway, and and all the proposals are are, are worrying. Anyway. And, and one of the proposals is to just go past uh, a version 1.0 and then to go 1.0.1 RC, but anyway, that's, um, we'll figure something out, but yeah. 
that's all I wanted to say. Um, it is for people who are doing uh, other specs and things. Um, just keep this in mind when you're doing releases, because um, it bit us. Okay. Uh, though luckily, I mean, luckily, no other specs have actually done RC tens because that's ridiculous. So, yeah. um, it's mo it's mainly our fault that this happened. Okay. Um, that was the first topic. Um, I'm I'm sure that no one is going to comment on it because it's just it's such a mundane detail. Um, the second thing was, uh, yeah, OCIv2 and setting up a working group. Um, so it's something which has been uh, discussed a little bit. I mean, obviously, I've been I've been championing some proposals. Other folks have been also proposing things. Um, yeah, there are there are two things. The first thing is is that um, we should probably have at least some idea of how we would set up a working group because, as far as I'm aware, we don't really have those in OCI. Um, as well as you know, who's interested? Who would like to have a chat about it? Um, so yeah. So uh, first of all, does anyone has anyone set up a working group before? I think is the first question I would ask. Is this specifically Within for the runtime? As for the image spec, so this is this is basically uh, reworking the um, rep well. There are several things that we'd like to get done. One of them is replacing tar archives with another format that has better um, better characteristics. And then also Alexander Larson on the mailing list uh, last week or the week before was discussing um, uh, image deltas, and this turned into a discussion of maybe we should have thought about how that should integrate into a possible OCIV two as well. Um, yeah. So I tried, um, and that was uh, a, hmm, maybe like a, the end of last year, beginning of this year, uh, a uh, build special interest group. Um, but I don't, I don't think that went anywhere. I don't know what the mechanics of it are. I understand that. Uh, you have to submit a proposal somewhere, but only, but I'm not sure where. Um, so yeah, it's vague. Um, is OCI even big enough to need special working groups or are we in the call here basically the working group? Yeah, I yeah. mean, I'd like I to feel like Artifacts it. has basically been like that. It basically is a smaller working group, but we've just kind of co-opted the weekly meetings. I, I don't think we should necessarily require creating a working group because that's a whole bunch of organizational overhead unless we find that these meetings are too full or like aren't representing all the people that actually care about what needs to be discussed. If you use the notary v2 stuff as an example, like we, there was enough, we were using this call, then we started doing some stuff in Slack, like we created a Slack channel. Um, we did have some separate meetings, we were reporting status back here. Um, we did create a repo because there is a different project, but in this case, it's, it's this project. So I think there's some stuff you could do, but to Jimmy's point, it, there's a lot of overhead that I don't know if you really need since most of the people are right here on this call anyway. So you probably have some other calls, maybe a little later in the day for you and others, which I don't think many of us would object to, um, because you'll have much more detailed conversations um, with a focused set of people, but I think that generally works. Drop the link into yeah. the charter into chat. And right now that's silent on like, you know, working groups and all of that. I think this is probably under um, the technical developer committee, but it doesn't really seem like there's a lot of need to be able to put a lot of process around this. My mishearing. Yeah, sure. I mean, it's just I wanted to not overload the the weekly call with um, mundane stuff about image spec. But yeah, I think that yeah, if we, okay. I mean, yeah, if we just say, hey, let's have a call, um, you know, a few hours later so that I don't sleep in, um, then we can we can just do it that way. Um, and yeah, and I'll send out a, a question on mailing list um, for those interested. Oh, hi. Okay. Thank you. If you see, we've been uh, trying I, to build the agenda sometimes, so feel free to dominate until, other than the fact that the time zone might not work for you, the time might not work for you, but. Uh... Yeah, I was just wondering, like, do we need to have a, I feel like it's more technical discussion that would work better over email first, you know? Yeah, I mean, um, so just to 
follow up. Um, you know, clearly the OCI has no formalities around working groups, but the dev email list is almost always quiet and anyone's free to use it to start threads of discussion. It's just a Google group. So, you know, it has archiving and all that. Um, and like Steve said, I think, you know, it's clear that people can just use common sense for, you know, if you want another call, if you want to use a, a Slack channel on the OCI uh, Slack team, you know, those are all open options where, you know, they're, we're not going to add a bunch of heavyweight process for people just to get together and have technical discussion. And, uh, you know, this call is definitely free for use for, for any OCI sphere topic, uh, for sure. I've had a uh, good luck just creating a, a shareable document, either a Google doc or like a HackMD document, uh, writing out some initial thoughts and having folks comment over it. And if the comments get too large, then making a follow up meeting. Yep. Yeah, that, that's a perfect, perfect model as well. Sounds right, like the way to go. Yeah. Yeah. I wasn't suggesting that we set up a like a like a whole uh, set of an extra set of, of bureaucracy and things. I was just <laughs> yeah. You know, um what what is the recommended way of getting people together for stuff like this? Because um at least for the specs that I've worked with, uh usually the the base document was imported from somewhere else, right? So I mean runtime spec and image spec were imported from from the Docker world. And so it didn't really go through this kind of of setup, but I guess I mean for artifacts and things like that, it was um, it was different. So um, yeah, I appreciate that. Well, yeah, I'll just set up a shareable document and then um, get people to look at it. The, the thing with the mailing list is that um, while obviously I mean doing kernel dev mailing list development is like pretty standard. Um, I don't know if it's just that. Um, uh, yeah, I, I find that technical discussions on, on the dev containers mailing list, the dev containers mailing list, sort of like peters out quite often, um, especially if you need to have a discussion over like several months about, about things. Um, but yeah, I'll set, so set up a show document and that, uh, that might work better. The, I know we've had debates around Slack and so forth, but I think it, it's been working generally pretty well. Um, so it, unless there's objection to the people who are actually in your core working group, I, I would suggest Slack has worked out well for exactly the problems that email doesn't do well with how do you track conversations and search and so forth. and um, that's what well, we I, I don't currently use Slack on a daily basis, so it'd be great to avoid that. I do, however, use IRC on a daily basis, but um, anyway, yeah, I, I think we just, I don't know if there's like a lot of vocal discussion that needs to happen right now. I think it's more, it's mostly just like however it is, whether it's, um, I don't know, in a doc or on a mailing list or whatever. I think that's sort of, we need to write down what, what are people interested, like the requirements, um, once we then decide on a set of requirements and then we can figure out a design and blah, blah, blah. Yeah, has there been a past, um, any precedent for like gathering feedback? Like, can we make polls where everybody says, hey, what's the most painful thing that you found? Uh, when implementing these things? Like who, who do you poll? Do you poll like all the maintainers of all the different container runtimes? Like how do we actually get feedback on a lot of these things? I think is a pretty good general question across all of the specs. I mean, the way that it's always been done is sort of like make a GitHub issue. Um, but I think it wouldn't be a bad idea if we said, um, and I don't know, maybe that's where um, getting just people to tweet it out or something. Um, is to say, hey, we're going to do a poll on this particular issue. Um, please participate if you're interested. And then people who are really interested and are really invested, they can say, oh, would I, can I join the, the discussions for the actual um, spec development? That's what I would say. Yeah. yeah. And I, I would just add that, um, you know, this is where the OCI, you know, has 40 some member companies. I mean, we can, Amy or Chris can, I'm sure, get us communication to, dev teams who have at least expressed interest in the OCI and yeah. like, like Alexa said, you know, can tweet that out from the OCI channels or, or whatever, if we want to do something uh, broader than just trying to 
figure out how to get the word out. What I think actually worked really well for the artifact stuff um, and distribution in general is actually writing a blog post. Um, so maybe if you get like a fundamental couple, couple ideas, like the ones you listed when I asked earlier, um, kind of flesh those out a little bit and then wrote a blog post about it and said like, this is how you get involved. I think that would probably get more, more, uh, interest for sure. Yeah, share it with me. I have edit rates on the blog, so whenever you're ready. So, uh, another thing that I want to just point out is a lot of, uh, a lot of the, the unknowns that are surrounding this spec seems to be dependent on, you know, whether a thing actually would, whether something that is, uh, uh, any idea would actually work or not. So I'm thinking, I, to me, you know, the reason why I haven't like gone beyond that one time that I got, Vincent and Steve together to try and figure out some stuff is because I'm still working on uh, like a proof of concept or something or the other or still trying to learn. Uh, and I would think that Alexa has the same issue. So there's bound to be some time where there would be like radio silence from people who are involved. I don't know. That's how I feel. I don't know if anyone else feels that way or if, if they do feel that way, then is there, are there any, um, <laughs> are there any, um, uh, ways we can combat that or, um, uh, account for it or adjust? I mean, for I it? think I think that when developing specs, having implementations is important. Is very important because it, it means we can, it, I mean, as you said, you can actually make sure the thing works properly. Um, I think that when it when it comes to the the like OCV two proposals right now, what we really need is we just need need people to be speaking together and saying like having it written down in terms of what different people find important in in fixing what things they find that image spec is deficient in and what features they would like. Um, and I think that that's something which we can do without having long periods of, of silence because long periods of silence in that context means we stop working on it for six months. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that once we have that written down and we start fleshing out some ideas, I'm sure that most of it will be based on proof of concepts and explaining, oh, we found that this doesn't work and we found this does work. Um, and then probably even comparing different proof of concepts to get a better idea of um, cause I don't, I don't know if we're going to end up with like two or three different designs that we have to pick between. Um, but if that happens, having, having prototypes would be, it would be good. And in that, in that case, you're going to end up waiting at, at least a couple of weeks for, for, to have like prototypes that actually like work and uh, perform it. Um, or, yeah. or longer. Yeah. And we in the Lumos community have basically the same system in production today. So especially for this one, I can provide a lot of feedback. Well, uh, I mean, for example, if you remember, Alexa, the you had uh, you had the last time you were working on OCI V2, or at least the last time I heard it, um, the whole idea of how to uh, include S bombs was something you didn't know anything about, or like you had no idea about. And I've been trying to figure out that part, and I still do not really have consensus around uh, how you would define the the software components that you'll be putting inside the container image and how you would represent how they connect with other containers or other artifacts. Uh, that's still being flushed out. So uh, that's just an example of how long it takes for these things to come together. It's all a giant web of mush. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I'm. I'm on no illusion. This is going to take at least at least at least a little while. Let's put it like that. Um, yeah. I think that if we. Um, but but in terms of things like like um, as bombs into that, it's something which. Um, 
I mean, during the discussion, we'll come up with, we'll, we'll, we'll end up having to decide on um, how much is going to be directly embedded in the image, how many things might be necessarily, um, you know, uh, optional additions, you know, accessibility. These are all things that we're going to discuss um, as, as part of the discussion. Um, yeah. And I know that I know Especially there's a lot of time I was we'll get us with, Sorry. I was like, hopefully a for, I, focus on 2.0, well, a, a discussion on 2.0 will remind us we should probably ship 1.0. <laughs> There is a one of the respect that that did happen. Um, yeah, it, it, it's yeah. No, run, run C is sort of that was. Um, I don't want to talk about it. Um, so the 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 thing about yeah, and uh, I mean OCR two is just a silly is just a silly name for um, because it would be backwards compatible anyway because we're adding something extra rather than removing the old thing anyway. Um, OCIB one point one doesn't sound as sexy. Is 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 the reason why I'm referring to it as OCIB two. Um, Actually, Alexa, yeah. just on a tangent of that, it, the stuff that Vincent has been working on until he like changed jobs and got busy, um, the extensibility stuff has a lot of potential. So I don't know exactly what you're proposing. I've seen a bunch of ideas. It'd be interesting to know how much of that would be enabled through the extensibility model. And we drive that into the distribution spec and then you and a bunch of others are free to create other stuff that you don't need changes in the spec anymore because the spec incorporated an extensibility model. It's almost like your requirements, could that drive the use case to validate this extensibility model design? So the, um, yes, though I think that there is, um, in theory, we, everything we're doing, we, we could do with OCIV2 at least, uh, from from when I was doing an implementation of it, all the things that I was touching that were core types within um, the image spec were things that it basically just boiled down to making your own media type. I mean, actually, the implementation that I have in Umochi, uh, it makes use of extensibility supporting features I have in Umochi, which are basically like, given a media type that isn't an OCI media type, use a different parser, basically. And like the, all of the code for doing that is all done that way. So it, I think that at least for the prototype that I have, I don't know how far we're going to go with with once we get everyone talking to each other and having having a broader discussion about what sorts of things we might want. Um, but assuming that at least the changes are in the same tangent, are in like in the same trend, um, the accessibility model does work. The thing is, is that I think that um, while the accessibility model does mean that, I mean, for instance, I mean, Tycho's mentioned before that they, they don't even use tar archives, they use, um, excuse me. Um, God, it's too early in the morning for this. Uh, flash effect, whatever. we use squash effects. Squash, squash effects, there we go, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say the back of my video, squash effects. They use squash effects for, um, for, for, layers, for layers or for the root effects. And that's something which the accessibility model allows them to do because it's just a different media type. I mean, it's a bit dodgy because the, the, the layer stuff is a little bit, let's say it's a little bit hairy in, in, the, in the image spec, but um, having changes like that is, is fine. The thing is, it, sorry, having extensions like that that are outside of the spec is fine. The thing is, is that for, um, I think that if we want to get either wide adoption of something or if we want to uh, actually have answers to some of the problems that people have with the image spec. I think it, it deserves to be put in the image spec, even though technically it could be an extension that someone else wrote. That, that's my view on it. Um, yeah. I don't suspect this will affect distribution very much at all. Um, but yeah, I definitely agree with that. You don't want to see fragmentation. Like you don't want to make the spec so generic that nobody actually even knows what they're doing anymore. And reading the spec is like basically just noise. Yeah. Um, it is an interesting I mean, question. Just, I wonder I when does Sorry. conformance test, like I, how, I think the question would part of this extensibility is how easy is it if for a customer to walk up and add some capability to a registry? If, to, I think the problem will be if a bunch of these extensions require each of us to do coding that takes us time and prioritization and so forth. And yeah, it becomes a very big tangled mess because each of us are going to have different priorities, different customers and so forth. If we can get to something like a Kubernetes kind of uh, um, CRD, um, 
model where they just submit something and it just works. I don't know if that's even practical. But mostly what Alexa is talking about are actually like the contents of the blobs that get uploaded to the registry. So this is not anything the registries care about really whatsoever. They don't need to know if it's SquashFS or anything else. They just know it's a blob. They don't even need to know it's a tarball, to be honest. We do enforce some validation on the media type. And like, I'm sure certain registries are more um, restrictive than others, right? Mm -hmm. But uh, these are all things to run the image and not necessarily just to download it and upload it. There is one exception, which is that the discussion of image deltas is something that we'll probably want to have a discussion with the distribution spec about how they might want to support it or in which level they want to support it. Um, but but the gen, the, as you said, the core idea is is just cha is just replacing the blobs with other blobs that the distribution spec really shouldn't care about. I mean, that could be one that's good for discussions or the extensions because. Like with deltas, I mean, it may make sense. I, I know Stephen Day proposed this at some point that if we're going to do deltas, the, the best place to do deltas is in the registry itself because trying to manage all of these, pushing up all these deltas just kind of bloats the registry a little bit and makes, puts quite a lot of burden on the, on the builders to try to predict how clients are going to be pulling stuff. Yeah, I think th there is, I think, a trade-off in terms of um, uh, how how smart the register needs to be and how much data it has to keep from this. I mean, this is a discussion that would happen, you know, that trade-off discussion would happen if once we obviously discuss the um, adding this to the, to the registry, but uh, to the distribution spec. But I would say that, um, yeah, I, I agree that it's not like we should have, like, an entry in the image manifest saying, here is the diff blobs from these other versions, I think that would be a mistake for a variety of reasons. Um, but on the other hand, um, making it so that, if we could make it so that either users could say, generate the last three deltas when they upload an image would be one option, or having the distribution spec, uh, so the registry do it for you. Um, that would, those both would be useful models. Like for instance, the, 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 uh, the former being the, Basically, the LXD model, though it's actually done automatically, but basically, you don't generate deltas for everything, and you don't generate deltas dynamically. You just generate a delta um, for the for, for the last three versions of the image, so that when people pull it, as long as they pull often enough, you get deltas. Otherwise, you get the whole thing. That would be. An, I'm just giving an example of like that's where you can do it without having to make it so that the registry always generates deltas. So I, I'm not necessarily sure what exactly we're talking about because. Um, a layer as it exists today is a tarball that has white out files or new versions of the file. That's basically a diff. That basically is a delta. And then with the mounting APIs in the registry distribution, like you don't actually download all those things. If you have permission to um, one of those blobs from another repository or it's another tag in the same repository, it gets mounted and you don't end up pushing it, right? Uh, this this would be um, this isn't uh, for different layers. This is for the base layer being changed. So like, okay, so this would, would be like one tag referring to another tag, basically saying that it's just this extra set of layers on top. It's it's like if you updated for your base Ubuntu image for for like security reasons. Right now, uh, like okay. if that's a two hundred megabyte, you'd have to re-download all two hundred megabytes, even though you know one hundred ninety nine of those megabytes may actually be the same. But Tar doesn't know that. Yeah, yeah, and that's, that's basically. I mean, and the thing is, is that in theory, um, the proposal I had, which was that we just make it so that the OCI image format is rather than using opaque tar blobs, instead we use um, a tree, or rather we basically convert all the files into individual blobs, or rather the chunks of all the files into individual blobs, and then you have um, a just like a single object that describes here is the set of all files, and then you compress that. The benefit of doing something like that is that you can then say, um, you then, individual chunks, uh, you only download the chunks that are changed. Um, the problem is, is that, practically speaking, um, there is actually some evidence that uh, even that system is not as ideal as having like binary diffs. Um, and so the discussion is, how should we just, how should we include binary diffs if we want to include them? Um, 
but yeah, if we, if we just had a different model for rather than tar archives, you can actually eliminate eliminate the the problem that Derek just mentioned. Um, but yeah. So yeah, that's why I was mentioning. I, I think it's really important that we get this extensions in for the registry because, I mean, I think what, what has really worked best for OCI is kind of you start off with some rough consensus through some group, then you gain some sort of user adoption, and then OCI can standardize it. And we can certainly use like these kind of working groups to, to get a rough consensus and try to go out and get some user adoption. Um, but at that point, like, it's not really like an OCI standard yet. So having something in the specification that allows for extensibility, uh, I think gives some room for developing some of these features. Yeah. I mean, don't get me wrong. I think that just having some tested in the wild is definitely the way to go. And making the spec before it's actually tested is putting the cart before the horse. So I, I agree. Um, the only thing is, is that, and this is again, the chicken egg pro chicken and egg problem, which is um, uh, people will re uh, not let's not say refuse adoption, but they'll sort of there'll be ba there'll be roadblocks in place to, to adoption if it's not a standard. But you can't really standardize it unless it's been tested, and then to get tested, you need to get people to, to adopt it, um, at least as an experimental thing. Um, but I think um, that's something we can stack event if we had again if we make some use of some OCI blog posts saying that this is the process we're going to be using. And so therefore, we ask people to, at the very least, try their hand at, at implementations or things like that um, to, so we can get some better feedback in terms of how well the current design doc works. That's what I would suggest. Yeah, you know, there, is a pre, and there is a previous spec from Sun Microsystems using this available. So yeah. you can also base on that. I mean, yeah, you're going to have to target at some point. I, I think we're saying getting getting the runtimes involved. Like, like I know this was something we wanted to do quite a while ago in container D. Like I know a lot of this OCI V2 stuff is like stuff you probably discussed with Steven like like years ago that yeah. has, hasn't really gone anywhere. Um, one of the reasons is, yes, we're, we're focused on stabilizing the client. Um, another is a lot of those problems we tried to solve in like other ways that are more um, more fixed on the individual cluster level rather than like kind of like time of first poll, um, if that makes sense, kind of things being able to do like peer to peer within a cluster rather than um, doing peer to peer across like the whole world or uh, just having a different chunk mechanism or something like that. Um, yeah. But that doesn't mean to say that like we're not interested in that. Um, like I, I think that's a great thing that we could add in Container D and then if that's something that's an option at the, those client levels and getting user adoption, I think is, is pretty easy at that point. Cause then it's just telling people to go enable some flag on their Kubernetes server rather than trying to go out and, and explain what it is to everybody. Yeah. I mean, the, I mean, the tricky thing with that is our back though, right? How, how, how do you know who's supposed to have access to something as soon as you're sharing images across your Kubernetes cluster? Um, if, if you don't have some kind of global or back. I've also like questioned um, at what point does it make sense for some of the interfaces that are used for orchestration to be managed by something like OCI? Like why is CNI a CNCF project? Why isn't CNI a standard managed by OCI? Like it was originally developed for Rocket, not even necessarily Kubernetes. So like it was for a container runtime. So technically it's not even necessarily for orchestration. So I like, there's a bunch of things that I feel like OCI could start to move towards in, tor in terms of like actually considering orchestration because that is the most popular way the stuff is being consumed. Or if we like slow moving APIs, we can take CRI. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, yeah, I was gonna say that regarding project adoption, we had a call, the team had a call yesterday um, discussing, we're, we're working on making the exact, uh, the exact terms of what project adoption, um, what it actually means and what sort of projects should be adopted. So I'd say, you know, um, watch this space. We're, we're working on at least agreeing on, on what 
what sort of projects should they accept at OCI? Because if you look at the charter, the charter is like, it was written in 2015, like it, it, it refers to the runtime. And I mean, technically, you know, if, if we're gonna be, if we're gonna be lawyers about it, um, basically every project after image spec technically actually shouldn't be in the OCI if you read the charter. So I think it's something which we're working on because it's, um, it's just outdated and no one had, no one sat, sat down and updated it, but yeah. Yeah, I was thinking that even with like what it would look like if we kind of did a reorg, right? Because work, OCI is working on the notary v2 working group and it's like notary and tough is a CNCF thing, not an OCI thing. It, it's kind of like a who's actually in control of these things? Who does it actually make sense to own these things? Um, yeah, I think a lot of this needs to be thought about and discussed cross, cross org. Yeah. I mean, speaking of historical weirdnesses, um, one of them would be the, the how things are split between OCI and CNCF. Because this is something which we are discussing. Anyway, yeah, uh, Phil posted the, the PR. There's a, there's a PR against the 2B repo to explain, um, uh, which is a document we're working on to try to explain like what things should be, um, should be included as projects. But yeah, but I would say as, as with most things, in this discussion in the container world, it's all like a series of historical oddities, what, why things ended up where they did. Yep, absolutely. Um, so we're a little over time. Um, so I assume to uh, honor people's schedules, we'll uh, wrap up. Uh, we did not, oh yeah, we missed an item for Josh. Do you, is it okay if we reset that for next Wednesday? Yeah. Um so if you're concerned with the conformance stuff, just take a look at the link. I compiled real world results from the major registries and saw a lot of discrepancies between what the spec says and what people are doing. Um, and there's an issue there that we're, that's in the 1.0 milestone that I, um, that this is for. So um, feel free to comment on that, um, on that GitHub issue. We've Thank you for doing that, Josh. Yes, to catch yes, up, of course. That. So we'll, we'll, I, I have an engineer queued up to be able to catch up with the stuff that you've been working on. So apologies for the delay, just been busy, but we, we do have that work scheduled. Yep, Good. no worries. Great. And I'll just say, sorry, just to finish up the, the topic that I was saying, I'll just say, yeah, I'll, I'll send another mail list with a link to a, to a HackMD um, explaining what we discussed to people who are on the call, and then we can, um, we can go from there. Great. Yeah. Thanks, Alexa. All right. Well, um, have a good week. We'll um, set up the agenda if anyone has something we missed or we want to come back around to. And maybe I'll, I'll give a quick update on TOB activities next Wednesday because I sort of meant to do that today, but we had plenty to discuss. So talk to everyone next week. Thanks. All right. Happy acting. Thanks, folks.